uh, joint work with uh, Jean Bogan uh, si sitting downstairs. I haven't given this talk anywhere yet. So yeah, this is the first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, now let me try to flip the page. No, it's not working. But let me just try to. Let me see. No, it's oh this one. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, first, the outline. Uh, well, let's see. The thing maybe. The point doesn't work. It doesn't. The yeah, the result. Yeah, but it's okay. So I think I, I will try to. Okay. okay. Yeah, point works. Yeah, now it works. Okay, maybe I. Okay. Horizontal. Perfect. Yeah, as always, like either in mathematics or in life, we run into uh, always run into technical problems, which can always be solved. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean. So this is what I want to talk about: is uh, uh, concerns uh, incompressible for Euler. So uh, this is uh, uh, written for a system of equation you already see uh, previously in uh, uh, Lay's talk. So this is written for a system uh, for incompressible fluid, where the unknown variable is uh, u velocity u, which has d components, and then uh, pressure p, which is a scalar value function. So altogether, if you count, you have uh, d equations for velocity, and then plus the diversion free equation. This is d plus 1 equations, and d plus 1 unknowns. So this is the incompressible Euler equation. So what has been well known uh, in the literature, if you read the, any textbook, basically, it's known that if you, uh, f if you just try to prove local well poseness, it's well known that in the so-called solidus of HS, uh, if you have the regularity S bigger than SC, which is uh, related to the dimension uh, by the relation 1 plus D over 2, then you can just prove local well poseness. This is often sometimes people call subcritical spaces. A well-known old, old uh, folklore problem is the following. What happens uh, as you push down? What, uh, what happens at the, at the case S equal to SC? Yeah, local in time, yeah. So it's a local problem. So but even before I come to the details, let me just uh, refresh your memory. This is going to be well known to some of you, but let me just any, anyhow do this anyway. So how, first of all, the critical index S of C comes out. The, so that's why the appearance of the critical index SC, 1 plus D over 2. So the typical energy estimate uh, is it goes the following. So here I'm, of course, omitting. Uh, hiding all the usual regularization, depending on how you call it, or modification arguments. But suppose you just run a typical energy estimate. What you have is the following. You compute the UHS norm squared. So you have to compute a time derivative. On the right-hand side, you're going to, after a little bit of massaging, you get the two terms. One is basically uh, HS norm squared. And the other term is a constant, which depends only on the S and D. And then the uh, derivative, the gradient of U, L infinity norm. Now, in order to close the HS energy estimate, local estimate, what you need to is to bound back this L infinity norm uh, by the H HS norm over the velocity. Now, since it's well known that for uh, typical HS spaces, the uh, critical index is D over 2. Now you have another additional gradient. That's why you see the 1 plus D over 2. That's why you need this. So this is the appearance of this critical index. It just comes from the solid embedding. Now, before you start even working on this problem, let's see how you can fail even if you try some other easy means. So that's why I call doom the attempt. But nevertheless, what are you attempting to do here? so I'm trying to do the following. Suppose, so before, in the previous page, I just worked with HS norm, single norm. 
And then you, on the right hand side, when you estimate it, you, 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 you get two terms. One is the uh, L infinity of the gradient, and then the HS norm. And in, in, uh, it's because we want to work with a single norm, HS. Therefore, you need the embedding. Therefore, you get this index, right? The next natural idea is that suppose I want to push a little bit. And let's say I just work with two norms and still hope that I can just push the index down. Maybe there's a hope. Now, quickly, you, you will discover this is not going to work. The reason is very simple. So suppose I just write down the equation for d of u. So after eliminating the pressure, roughly, this equation looks like this. This is roughly, but actually, this is almost precise. So the partial t of d of u. So uh, think of this as just the one component, dj uk, which is just a scalar. You have a transport part, which is u dot gradient d of u. Transport term preserves the LFD norm, so this is OK. That's why I put an L OK here, because you can always easily estimate it. And then you have du dot gradient of u. So this is basically du squared. Now, if you only care about the local theory, you start with a bump size 1, and then you work it with a very small time interval, order 1. And this is still going to be bounded. So these two, two terms are going to be harmless. Now, what's the most serious thing comes from the pressure term, where when you invert it, the Laplace, you pick up a Ritz transform. This Rij here is just a Ritz transform. Uh, uh, you can think of the usual way. Uh, well, just something like that, something like this. So this is a, some people like it, some, some, some people absolutely hate it, but this is, a, this is a matter. So you have the risk transform acting on the nonlinearity. So this came from pressure. So it is because of this uh, term. Now you want to bound the L infinity norm, so you need to bound the source term. Let's say treat it as the source term. And quickly you discover that in order to bound this, because of this bad guy, uh, risk transform, you find you need to throw back the, your favorite object, d over 2 plus epsilon. And there, there you pick up this u, d over 2 plus 1 plus epsilon again. So again, you run this argument, you see that the, the critical index you will appear. So no matter how you do, that's why I call it do. So your, the problem is what, the risk transform doesn't act nicely on L infinity? Or right, right, right. Already, like, even if, even if no, you. Yeah, yeah, it's good at LP. But uh, here, it, the point is that even if you just work with the two norm, you, you're going you're gonna to fail. So this is the thing. Okay. Which it's bounded. So, yeah, so is that, did I say it correctly then? That yeah, so you're going to need, you need the, still need the critical index, this S index here, yeah. bigger than uh, 1 plus the critical index. There's no hope you're pushing down the index. So you, you, if you want to uh, close your N, all the uh, estimates, you need this S absolutely respect the borderline. There's no way, even if you just throw in this way, you, you cannot. Does the problem come from the least transform? Yeah. Come from the least transform? It will come from the, actually, inevitably, it, it's come from the least transform. Yes. But why? why I mean, the least transform is nice on, on, on L2, of course. But yes, but not on L infinity. But not on L infinity. Yeah. So yeah. That is the, that's the problem. Yeah, you will see that this is like so manifestation from this like simple computation. Of course, it came from the, at the stage of L infinity, but it also pop out on the other places. So the problem is the, this guy is always there in different guys, disguise. This is already seen in, the, in this thing. So, this, uh, so as I already said this, that there are issues with this criticality, why this index, S, has to be big, bigger than S critical. You can also see this from this uh, vorticity formulation, which I will come to a little bit later. And similar questions will arise in other functional spaces. In fact, this has been open for a while, so that many, I mean, no matter how you do, you will always see this problem. And there is a little, uh, a rather extensive literature on the well postness of these things. Uh, and I have to, uh, let me just do a little. I mean, I won't, well, I won't. I think it's fair to say there was no real consensus. Right. Whether this thing was right or wrong. Exactly, exactly. There was a, uh, uh, nobody knows, uh, basically. It was well right. There was complete, yeah, critical. And then also in similar other spaces. Is completely open at that time. So the f there's a folklore, but let me just review a little bit to, to, to just give you a little bit of uh, perspective. This must be like almost be, so, but let me. S so the, the, this work, cl classical results, dates back in the uh, 40s uh, and even 70s. Uh, this is uh, uh, Lichtenstein and Gunther uh, proved first in the, our favorite CK alpha spaces, holder spaces. You have local well postness. And then uh, uh, Volibner get a global well postness of 2D Euler in holder, and also the Shaman uh, has 3D and also in his handbook uh, of these uh, holder, uh, holder well postness results. And for, uh, there's a, in an annals paper in the 80s where Eben and Marston proved the local well postness of Euler in 
this again, you see this uh, uh, non-critical index here, SC plus epsilon on general compact manifolds and allowing, for example, C infinity boundary. And this is what's generalized by Bourguignon and then Brazis in WSP, where S is, yes, <laughs> okay, yes. You see, I don't speak this language, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So this S bigger than D over P plus one. Again, this is the index uh, you will see. Now, let me just uh, go a little bit more recent. This is in the Soblif school. Basically, there are more uh, result, well positioned results in the Soblif. And this dates back even to Cato, where he proved a local well positioned first in 75 in the continuous in time, HX norm, uh, M norm, where this is M has to be an integer. So this is a look like a technical restriction, but then this was later removed by this celebrated, uh, the by now it's very cl uh, classical work, Cato Pons, where they just remove the restriction and then work with any general. Uh, Soblet spaces, WSP, S is the regularity, P is the LP. So any real S bigger than D over P plus one. Again, this is a, uh, the, at the borderline, base, uh, about a little bit above the borderline. So what the heart of the matter in all these estimates, in these local well positioning estimates, is so-called Cardo-Pons commutator estimate, where you have this J of S equal to uh, one minus Laplacian of this thing, and then you prove a commutator. And this is needed. If you wish, this is a commutator estimate. It's just another name for integration by parts, basically, when you try to do the integration by parts in the energy estimate. That's why you need this thing. And here you will see this is a, maybe should I play the safe card, not saying anything about the endpoint? Okay. Yeah, so this, uh, so there was an open problem also for this uh, cardo points inequality at the P equal to infinity. And this was just settled last week uh, by Bogan and myself, so. so. Uh, basically, the inequality will hold. I mean, there's a version of this cardo points uh, estimate at the infinity, and the infinity, uh, uh, p equal to infinity, p equal to infinity. People like seriously conjecture that at infinity it fails, but actually it holds. So this. But it didn't change the state of your result. No, no, it didn't. Right. So, so yeah, yeah. There was some other. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in a sense. So, so you get a, you get a commutator value on L3. Uh, it's like uh, some other like dis uh, distribution uh, 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 Lebanese rule, fractional Lebanese rule. Yes. 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 No, the, uh, 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 no, 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 the, not this one. Uh, uh, a different one, which is the uh, a variant of this inequality, which was conjectured. That. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. If you wish, maybe somebody can try as an exercise. So let's say you have this uh, D equals to square root of Laplacian, which is, you just think of it at the free side, it's C. So then you have D of S, S bigger than zero. It's a very simple estimate, if you wish. This is just a Lebanese rule. Then this is uh, the question is that whether you have, let's say P1, and then F, uh, G, let's say P2, and then this is D S, uh, G. P3, and then uh, F, P, P4, obeying, of, of course, the scaling relations. Let me just, uh, the, the, end, the open case was the infinity case. What happens? And then let's here, let's say you take F and G, Schwartz, Schwartz function, let's say. And actually, experts would uh, conjecture that this is wrong. It's very easy to believe that it's wrong, but actually it holds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Similar, yeah, you can just uh, as a category. But this I, I, did, I did not check yet. So I played the safeguard. I don't know the answer. But I would say that it's easy to do. So, yeah, yeah. This is correct. So, yeah, but this, this I didn't check yet. Okay, so but. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, well, depending on your, uh, your version. But let me just play the safe one. So. I wouldn't say that this is once. You, yeah, let me just carry on because uh, yeah. So the thing is the following. So again, as you see already in this uh, sublet spaces, you need once again this is s bigger than d over p plus one in the, in, the, in the, all the results you already see. So not surprisingly, again, you you convince yourself how does this happen? This is came from the same argument with the, with the HS, is that you need to bound the du infinity in in the same space. That's why. 
it's, it's again solely embedding. And the deep behind it is the basically risk transforming, if you wish. There are something going on there. So there are more refined, slightly refined results in the Basov spaces. I know that in the fluid dynamics, depending on your taste, some people absolutely hate Basov spaces. Some people really <laughs> like Basov spaces. So, uh, so but, but let, let, let me just uh, give you a perspective anyway, because there were also, the similar questions were completely open also for Basov spaces, all these spaces. So Vishik in 98, he proved that the global uh, well positive of 2D Euler in this borderline space, uh, Basov uh, B2 over P plus one, P1. Uh, this is, a, this is the index, this is the regularity index. Again, you see its dimension is two, so therefore D over P plus one, and this is LP. And the last one is a summability. So you have the global well position in that space. And again, in, the, in this uh, remaining issue was taken up by, by Dong Ho Tai in 2004, where he proved local well positionness in all dimensions, again, at the, uh, with, with this index one, little one, this little one, uh, index one here. And uh, two Koreans, uh, Pak and Park, this is correct. They proved. Pak and Park. Pak and Park. <laughs> so this is a, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, they prove local web was at the case B equal to infinity. So you have this thing uh, all the way. So, but no matter what you see, the, the one of the curious thing you see is this index one, which is never changing, seemingly. So there's, a, there, there's a, just a very simple idea behind it. So this key idea of a pass of refinement is that. But the first one is inhomogeneous. All are inhomogeneous. right. It, can, uh, you, yeah, it, can, uh, you, it can includes the lowest. So you, you can put the, the key idea of Basov refinement is the following. You can always push down the regularity to critical S equal to D over P plus one. No, uh, remember that we cannot do this at the solvable setting. But the, at the Basov setting, you can push it all the way down to D over P plus one. But as a price, at a price, you pay some ability. So one of the simple examples you can see is that, let's say you are R2, you have the H1. Uh, it's, it's in the Basov language, it's B122, which does not embed in L infinity. But once you change this little L2 sum into the little L1 sum, you, you again gain this solely embedding, and that's the key idea. So nothing. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. When you give lectures, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Should, should, I, should I say it or? Yeah, I, 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 you, you need a low frequency control. This is you need it. You need it. The last one you need it. You need the. You can you can do homogeneous this thing. This is no problem. Yeah. You you need the B infinity one. So, in this this in the in the different uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the basic. Ma Yeah, yeah. So the critical. So uh, this this will come up in a little bit in the last index. This will. Yeah. So this is a limit. Yeah. Let me say, say this thing. Yeah. So, so this the thing is the following. So the, this is a okay. So this is the the slide answering your question. This is what I call the Basov L1 cheat. So if you insist on having little L1 cheat, if you insist on having critical regularity S C. Then you need absolutely this last index here, which is the little L Q summation. You absolutely need the Q equal to one to accommodate. In fact, once you step away one, nothing was known. So this is the reason. It's absolutely if you go to the literature, there's no well positive results were known for Q bigger than one. Was you? This was the state of the matter. So nothing was known. Yes, yes. Everything is treated, basically. It, it, yeah, I, I'm not waving. I, I'm trying not to wave hands. So when I say it, it, it's for sure. So the common theme in this, in all, in all this business, well positioned result, even though it's an analytic analysis question, but there's always some trace you can, a theme you can summarize, is the following. Find a suitable Banach space X. For example, you can think of F here is the curl of U, and then X is the best of space. Such that two, two things happens. L infinity and risk transform infinity is bounded back by the X dorm. And some version of Cato Pons estimate, commutator estimate, which you see a previous slide holds. These are the two absolute things, minimal basically, if you try to lower down. If you try to good probe. So in fact, 
as you see, that some things in life is always inev inevitable. So this is, this is happening here. So what's, this, this kind of a idea completely uh, breaks down for the critical space, which is still, again, this is a, so again, once you start working on this problem, you, let's say, you start to have always, you're full of hope, and uh, you have lots of fantasies. There are two typical fantasies in, 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 the, in, in the community by incompressible fluids. First thing is that maybe we didn't do good, good enough in the commutator estimate. For example, the cutoff points, maybe there are some super good commutator estimate which takes care of cancellation and something which we can do better. And then another typical thing people always in, in, compre in compressive fluids is that divergence free connection, maybe you didn't use it, really use up the divergence free, con divergence free connection, maybe you can use it and try to save the day. These are the two typical fantasies. In fact, immediately there's a no. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, there's a very nice paper, little paper in the SIAM by Takada in 2010, where he constructed basically all the divergence free counter examples. What's more interesting is that the, these counter examples are divergence free of Cardopon's commutator estimate fails in all the critical spaces best of. This includes the sublift. In, uh, th this one includes sublift. The Trabella Zonkin one includes sublift. The best of, and then all the borderline cases. Is, a, uh, is answered, this thing. It's a very extensive list, but this is basically the... Does this include BMO? In, uh, BMO? Or well, the, you feel you, yeah, if you have the P equal to 2, uh, the Q equal to in the Trabella Zonkin case, you have. So you, 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 BMO is false. Yeah, it's false, so you don't have this thing. So you have some kind of estimate, but it's not the... So once you s uh, see the uh, uh, negative, all these negative results, you start to think negatively. But where do you... So where do you start? Well, this is the slightest clue, which is the very, what I call it, the heuristic argument. It's the following. So let's say you consider 2D Euler, which is the equation which I wrote before. Let's just do it uh, in a simpler form. Let's just think about the u1, u2, and then take the divergence perp, which is giving you a scalar function, vorticity. In 2D, it's a very simple. It's just in the vorticity form. It's just single transport. And here, this is the velocity. Now, the critical space for velocity is h2, because here is the, uh, the velocity. Uh, but uh, since uh, uh, vorticity is the, the great like, divergent perp of u, so it's, it takes one derivative. Therefore, for vorticity, you need to compute h1 on. So now let's do the heuristic computation. Let's say you just compute the uh, partial x1 omega l2 naught. Just do, do the computation. Now, after a very simple integration by parts, you realize that on the right-hand side, you have a minus of this guy, which is a risk transform of omega times gradient omega, and then another gradient, partial one of omega dx. So now, just look at the card, well, the cards that you have. You only have the assumption that your u is h2, let's say, which is translated to vorticity is h1 only. You ha only have this assumption. Now, this is a very uh, easy to do uh, if you use a little bit of analysis, or I mean, whatever you do. You, you can make this thing very large with the only assumption that o omega is h1 only. So this is because you only have this card, in, uh, this, this assumption in hand. So therefore, it's not difficult to show. There is no, because of this kind of a simple computation, there is no C continuous in time, because you need to compute the time derivative, uh, h2, well, poisonous for velocity. This is easily ruled out, this kind of a simple argument. But then this is, doesn't take, take care, rule out any other possibility. For example, continuous in time, but then h2, or LT infinity h2. And because, as is uh, some of you well known, that there is the Udovich theory, which even uh, get some where what is the only in L infinity or that. So basically, the, these 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 things do not uh, do not answer the question. In a, I mean, it does not address the question. So this is very simple, but. Yes. Let's say you have uh, omega h one, and then this is uh, this is a rich transform of omega. And uh, with the omega only h1, this, this trilinear term can be very large. That's what I, what I want to say. You can, uh, you can construct that. It, it's again because of the similar. Yeah, because of this risk transform. Yeah, then the, yeah, yeah. And actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's, as, you, as I always said, that it's the, the, the thing is always there. Come, uh, yeah. So therefore, uh, after, and there are always, uh, there are lots of other things, which, but let me just. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Yes? So in your right hand side here, suppose you are in make a beta zero. Yes. But suppose uh, what this is in uh, H1. Yes. H1. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the first term in the integral, yes. the ordinary phase, you can just take a beta, uh, put it in the 
that the blood current, I keep on with blood current, uh, keep it. Yes. No, 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 it's not, uh, you, you need to work. You, you, have a, you, have, you have to work. You have to work. It's not as simple as that, of course. You have to think, uh, make sure that your H1 known where is it concentrated, and then all that. You have to work a little bit. Yeah. So basically, the folklore problem, which I said, is the following. So now, with all the overwhelming evidence which I have presented to you, the, this, this is the conjecture which was there. In fact, the older equation that the statement is ill posed somehow in quotes because you don't know what does it mean really, but it's ill posed for a class of initial data in HD over 2 plus 1, RD. Of course, as analysis always, you can ask similar questions. Analysis version in, in the general sublief, Bassoff, Chappelle or Zonking, even the list is not, there are even like some more refinements of these things. Now, looking back, part of the difficulty, uh, one of the th thing is that the besides deciding that this is going to be your post, part of the difficulty f as of, at the first hand is as an as analysis question, how even to formulate it. So when you start working on it, how do you formulate this kind of, a your, what do you mean by really your post? How do you form a clean result? And infinite worse, of course, you need a strategy because there is no available strategy, any available strategy which is usable. In fact, uh, I mean, in, in view of the recent development in this Onsaga conjecture and all that, uh, I mean, you will start to have a fantasy of using the, for example, the method by Cyclohedi and Delalis, how you can, maybe you can use that to solve this problem. But uh, quickly you will discover you cannot do that. This I can discover it with you in private, but this is, uh, I mean, doomed, basically. So infinitely worse, there's no other way to, 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 to approach this problem. So basically what you need to, in order to do, is that you need a deep understanding of how the critical space topology changes under this dynamics. You need Uh, I mean, this, uh, when I say topology, I mean the, really this critical space norm. Okay, this is not a better name. As analysis, I should have put the norm. Okay, critical space norm, or something like that. But norm is the topology, right? Generates topology. Yeah. So, so there are there are some uh, explicit solutions, which is very uh, from this perspective. There are some weak results. Uh, I mean, not weak, but just uh, uh, some results before. So one of the things which dates back you know, to to the to the. Uh, 87 by Diperner and Maida, which were they, they call a two and a half dimensional flow, which is never a good, I, I don't like this name, but it's a, it's a shear flow. It's simple, I put it simply, it's just the following. You take, you, you, this is like a sort of a, very one of the luckiest thing in, in older, so you, is that you have an explicit solution. So what you do has, is the following. Let's say you take any given 1D function, any given function, let's say smooth, and you write your velocity in terms of the following, f of x2, 0, and then g of this thing, composition. Mm -hmm. So how did you get this, actually? But this is not like somebody give you this ma miracle, f uh, miracle formula and say that this, is, uh, this works. This is actually guessed from uh, some, I mean, it's a heuristic computation. You can just get this thing really quickly. But, but let, let me not uh, say this here. But this, is a, this works. So basically, what this does, once you have plugging this, this solves a 3, 3D Euler with pressure p equal to 0. So this is just works. Now, the, the, there's a result by De Perner uh, and Leons is the following. If you consider the velocity, the W1P in, on a torus, torus is, uh, is essential here because you see that all these things are just dependent only on one variable. Therefore, you cannot have a all space. So it has to live on a compact domain. So for any P between one and infinity and T bigger than zero, you can achieve an, a norm inflation of the velocity W1P norm which is uh, the just a very lo low norm that in, 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 in finite time. So from one to m. This was a very, like, in a sense, if you wish, it's a cheap result. Uh, I mean, I, I shouldn't use the word cheap, but it's an easy, it's a, it's a, it's a easy argument to do. And then Bardos and TT in 2010, three years ago, four years ago now, uh, revisit this kind of exam uh, revi revisited this e example and proved the following, that you can have for any alpha, you can have the initial data in C alpha, but then UT not in C beta for any T bigger than zero. So you, you see that this, is a, uh, this beta is strictly bigger than alpha squared. This is not surprising because it's a composition of holder functions. If you have C alpha, you call, compose it. You get C alpha squared. This is how you get this thing. So this is a, like, a, a very simple computation. And as a result, you can also get EO positives in some, uh, some, some uh, triple zoning and basal spaces. And then uh, Misolik and Yonida also proved, pushed this thing a little bit further by adding a logarithm. So th let me not uh, waste your time here, but this is the. Yeah, Barlow's kitty is the following. If you have initial data, see alpha, yes. 
weak solution, but then you can have, it loses the regularity, jumps from C alpha to C alpha squared. Yeah, it's a solution, it's given this, something like this. It's a solution. This is a quick solution. This is a given by this thing. By, by finding judici judiciously finding f and g, picking f and g, which is basically locally, c alpha. So you just put it right. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, in fact, well, this thing is, well, I leave this thing as an exercise in my fluid dynamics course. My students, <laughs> five students out of six get it. So <laughs> this is, so this is uh, basically what the, so then the, there are more uh, results which is understanding the solution operator, which is dates back uh, in, in, in Cardo 75, where he first proved that for the Burgers equation, the solution o operator is not holder continuous in HS norm. And uh, this is uh, for the Euler, the analysis question for Euler is that the data to solution map uh, of Euler is not uniformly continuous in HS topology. So this is a, and, and you see you've strengthened the result, but actually there was a, maybe I should not say this thing yet. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, Yingzi uh, in 2013 nowhere it, it proved the nowhere uniform locally uniform continuous in HS as bigger than d over two plus one. Mm -hmm. So the Chesidov and Shivikoi uh, proved the yieldposeness in these spaces, which is uh, by itself as R infinity. So here, uh, let me just uh, s say one one word about it. So the the reason that you are able to prove results like this is really because you take the last index to be infinity, which is basically uh, even if you don't know best observation, let's say, you just take the, you just look at the Fourier modes, mode by mode, and then try to do a round argument. Now this is what they do, and in fact this is a, a fairly, I mean, you, it's once you once you localize, it's 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 not difficult to do. So uh, returning back to these uh, to the to the older, so Udovich and then prove the holder the solution. Uh, operator is like holder less than e to the minus ct, and then this is taken up by Kelleher at the, uh, at the California Riverside. He proved that it's no holder continuous at all. Basically, you can for anything. So these results, even though it's there, but has no bearing on the critical case, basically, but it's just a partial, some partial evidence in perspective. So after, let me just bore you with these things. Let me just present the result, and then I will, the, in the remaining time, I'll give you the proof and all that. So the result of strong uh, your poisonous of Euler, I will explain what does it mean strong and then uh, all these things. So roughly speaking, uh, the results are, the, the, again, this is joining with, uh, with Bogan. So, so uh, the, the result is the following. So let the dimension d equal to two or three. Of course, the higher dimension is also I mean, there. So the, the equation, uh, all the equation, I indeed, in answer to these things, your post in all these spaces, which I basically mentioned, all the best of spaces. Of course, I, there's a little clarification that we need to do here because, as I said already, that what do you mean by your post and all that? So, the, so the situation is actually depending on whether you are optimistic or pessimistic. So it's actually worse or better than we thought. So basically, the th the thing is the following. Let's say you try to do this thing, uh, your postness. You would do the following usual scenario. You would think, okay, initially, I have the velocity. X. Let's say x is the norm that you work with. This uh, this x norm. Initially, the u zero x norm is very small, and then later you try to prove that for some judicious choice of the u, this x norm becomes large. This is what you the usual scenario here. But here, this, uh, the, what, what we mean by the strong yield poisonous is the following. We can have the data where, you, I mean, in fact, many. So uh, u0, x norm is less than one. I mean, we're very small. But then the essential su supreme on any finite interval is infinity. So this is a quantum jump, I mean, from one to infinity, basically. So this is a, why, does, why do you even bother showing this? The reason is the following. This is really kills even the LT infinity x. So you don't even have the weak solutions LT infinity in this topology. This is the sharpest formulation uh, uh, available so far. This, so nobody has uh, done this, basically. So, so strongly yield poster has also another meaning, which is the following. In fact, this is not only, it's a generic yield poster. If, if you wish, it's genom generic <coughs> inflation. So basically, it's the following. Any smooth data, let's say u0 in Schwartz, you can find the, initial, find the nearby data, v0, which is really close to u0 in the x norm. I can find that, such as really small, such that this corresponding, if you evolve the data in finite time, this thing becomes infinity. So therefore, this yield poisonous or norm inflation is actually dense. Not only it's there, it's not like so for some like a measure zero set, it's actually dense in this critical x topology. So it's, it's, this is the uh, formulation, strong in both sense. 
Uh, this is a, comes from the construction. It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, uh, so to state the, form, uh, the results, uh, let me just uh, let, uh, let me just recall for you that the 2D Euler in the I, I will need to use the vorticity formulation, which is very convenient for 2D Euler. This is uh, vorticity, and then this is the equation. And and 3D, the main difference is I pick up an extra term. So this thing I will comment on this thing later. But for the moment, let's com com concentrate on 2D. Okay. So coming up, I mean, because it is really end of the day, so I would not bother you too much, only two technical slides. But on the other hand, as you always know, that in, in, in any talk or in, just like in the movie, there still you need to state some results, technical. So only two technical slides, so which is like carry some flavor of the whole proof. One cases, which is the, where the initial vorticity is not compactly supported. This is an, a, a softer case. And the other case is the initial data is compactly supported. So the only two cases for 2D OLA, we're going to zoom in for 2D OLA. And 3D OLA, of course, as always, is a lot more involved. And I will give some comments later So for this thing. So only two technical slides. So this is the first slide, technical slide one. And I really don't want to bother you with much, but let me just put it here anyway. So the thing really focus he, thing here is the following. So for any initial vorticity, uh, CC infinity, which is you can find a C infinity perturbation such that the corresponding norm is small, like the critical norm is small. And then the, there exists a unique classical solution. It's not a weak solution. It's a unique classical solution in this case, for which the, it solves the 2D Euler, and such that the, it obeys the L1, L infinity, and these bounds. But on the other hand, the desired phenomenon is the following. The gradient of omega L2 norm is infinity. This is a translated. If you translate in terms of the of a velocity, it's U of uh, H2 norm become infinity. H dot 2 norm become infinity. So this is, a, this is the technical statement. Only one. And then there's one more to suffer, and then that's all. So basically, the comments here is the following. So first thing is that the H dot minus 1 is, is actually not needed because, well, depending on your taste, because some people would like to keep it, some people, because so that the velocity is in L2. But some people argue that for 2D flows, typical flows are not in H dot minus 1. So depending on your flavor. But this is actually not needed. You, uh, you can add it or as you wish. So in our construction, although the initial velocity u0 the, is, is a c infinity and bounded, c infinity and bounded on the whole space, the gradient of it is unbounded. So it's locally smooth, but then uh, when you take the supremum over the whole, whole space is infinity. So this is the feature of the construction. So in, f in particular, you can, it's not hard. Uh, it comes from the construction. It's a classical c infinity, uh, somewhat uh, as a surprise. C infinity solutions. In particular, you don't need to appeal to the celebrated uh, Udovich theory to prove uniqueness and all that. So in fact, there are more uh, to capture the behavior. Cato 75 is a wonderful paper I mean, where he did this, uh, the, the local web business. So he also introduced, uh, it's a very wonderful, uh, so he introduced also the uniformly local subleaf spaces, which is LP. And why do you want, even want to introduce that? Because he, he want to introduce a theory so that to take care of the unbounded case and the periodic case simultaneously. And that's why he, in fact, this thing can be refined and to show that the, in the uniform local norm is also infinity. So this is, a, this is a, uh, easy to do. This is a. So here you're Right, right, exactly. Yeah, the, there's a little bit thing to do. So the next and the last uh, tech, I mean, technical slide, which is, we see, uh, we're, we're halfway through already. So it's like for the compact case, which is where life, life becomes more, uh, more fun. Basically, the, the reason for doing this is, is, is that you're going to take care of the periodic case. In fact, the fine interactions of, of the solutions. So for simplicity, let me just uh, assume that the g is odd in x1, which is just a harmless assumption in x1 only. So this is, it's not hard to show that this is going to be preserved by the Euler flow. So you can basically forget about that. But just uh, this is uh, the technical assumption for completeness. So this is the last technical slide, which is uh, another page. I think there's another page. Well, let's see. So there's another page. So basic difference. Let me highlight the difference. So when you're in a compact domain, when you're a compact domain, your perturbation is not going to be so smooth because it's going to be this h dot 1. You can just uh, uh, like this. And then your solution actually has a very limited regularity. So the vorticity is going to be in L infinity cap h dot minus 1. And then the velocity is actually almost the log Lipschitz, but this is a technical statement. So the basic thing, basic feature of the construction is the following. The solution, actually the vorticity, has additional local regularity in the following sense. It's very limited. 
So there exists the x star in the R2, such that for any point away from it, there exists a limited neighborhood, such that the solution is smooth in that neighborhood. So you, you, you may wonder, why do I need, even need to state, state this, uh, this statement? It's because of the following, this, which is coming up. So there is a following. It's, it's because I, I need to be able to say, what do I mean by h dot 1 norm? Because when your solution are not so smooth, what do you mean by h dot 1 norm? So this is the <laughs> capture in the following way. So basically, there exists a sequence, which is arbitrarily close to uh, time 1 over, I mean, time 0, and a corresponding space uh, space region, such that your solution actually is C infinity in this region. And the associated uh, h dot 1 norm is become large. So this way you have no ambiguity whatsoever to say that what do I mean by h dot 1 norm is infinite. You, you, you're the, you're the norm yes, yes. And also the smaller and smaller scale, you have completely control in the construction. This is, uh, so in a sense, you, I mean, you have to think very clearly what do I mean by, by this. But this is, can be done. So this is a comment uh, here. When, whenever you move away from the smooth category, you need start to worry about the uniqueness. And in fact, this is a, let me not bother you too much. Basically, this is, there is a celebrated Udovich theory, which gives you L infinity, and then which was generalized by Vishik, where you even allow that the B, uh, B dot infinity one norm to diverge at a certain power, which is like log something like that. And well, you, you need some uh, assumptions on this rate. And in fact, in our case, the uh, uniqueness is OK. It's basically ironed into the construction. Basically, we have uniform in time control, L infinity, during the construction of this thing. So therefore, you have uniqueness. In fact, this is the proof is self-contained. So you, you, you prove right, right away that it's unique. So now let me, in the remaining time, uh, we have uh, about 13 slides. I will, I will do it, try to do it fast. Or so without, in the 3D case, uh, the, the situation, I will not present you a te technical slide, but there are many things. The first thing, one of the first difficulty, without even going, to, going into any computation detail, you realize there are several things. One of the outstanding difficulty in 3D, of course, is the lifespan of smooth initial data. Now you are making a construction. You, do, you got to worry about the lifespan. And the other technical issue is that if we are going to make a perturbation in this, uh, in, this in 3D, this critical space for velocity is h5 uh, over 2. So now you need to pay, make a judicious perturbation in H5 over 2 while still not destroying the lifespan. So this is the thing. And of course, as you see already in one couple of slides before, 3D equation picks up the, what is the stretching term, which is omega dot gradient u on the right-hand side. So these are the difficulties which you have to, without even doing anything, you know that there is something. Now, the technical, let me give you te some technical remarks. So basically, the 3D case, uh, the results uh, can be stated, but there are some, some things. First thing is that the, you, once you go into 3D, uh, suddenly your things become non-local. So the critical norm, the reason is that the critical norm you work with is h dot 3 over 2 for vorticity or h5 over 2 for velocity. It's a non-local norm. So therefore, there is a technical nuisance which you have to play, which, is, which deal with this uh, uh, non-local fractional, fractional operator, this gradient to the 3 over 2. So this thing is you have to play here. I will comment on this thing a little bit later when I come give a summary of the proof. Now, on the other hand, for, for those of you who are familiar with the Basov space, the result can be, can be sharpened significantly. What I mean, I really, it's a significant in the following sense. You can have an initial data which is really, really small in the, the, in the Q norm where Q is between, uh, uh, bigger than 1. But then you have a mode by mode inflation which is the last index is like basically supreme over all the indexes become infinity. This is a very sharp, it's not a C in the same space. I'm going to be in the, in the, in the even weaker space, it's going to be infinity. So this is the sharpest thing you can do, basically, with this thing. And so, G is, what, the uh, G, G is a given. Given any smooth data, I make a perturbation. I get, get, I get a corresponding solution, which is going to be having oh, inflation. Okay. That's the statement, yeah. So in our talk, maybe I should say this, take g equal to 0, let's say. So the, the, then it's just a statement, OK? So the, similarly, you can state other results for, the, for these things, but let, let me not bore, bore you with this. So in the remaining time, let me give, the, give you the proof. So the proof, uh, to, for simplicity, I don't give, give you a couple of ideas for the proof. For simplicity, I will not just uh, give you a 3D or something, just to present you in the simplest setting in the, in the 2D OLR. Again, this equation you see a, a number of times. The critical space for vorticity is h dot 1, for velocity is h2. So this is the equation. So the, the step one is so-called the uh, creation of large Lagrangian deformation. 
basically what you do here is the following. So because you see that the, your solution is transformed by a, a def, by the along the method of Kadir, it's a just transport equation, basically, even though it's a nonlinear transport equation. So you can just uh, play with, uh, uh, you need to play with the flow map, which is defined by this equation. It's very easy, just uh, everybody knows. Now, the hard part here is the following. So you need to choose a good theta for which the L1, L infinity, and H1 norm is uh, small, but the corresponding the deformation uh, D of phi infinity becomes large. So where the phi is the flow map. So the hard part is to choose this, well, uh, let me not, not con uh, uh, waste your time. I mean, let me just not spe spend time on these technical details. I mean, it's all there. The, the basic thing is that you want to prove your deformation matrix becomes essentially hyperbolic. Why do you want to do that? It's because you want to create a scenario that your H1 norm becomes large, picks up the, pick, pick up this de uh, deformation near that region. So the second step is the following. So the second step is the local inflation of the critical norm, which is uh, the, after, you, after you achieve that your Lagrangian map becomes large, then you want to, uh, you want to show that the gradient of the uh, vorticity norm becomes large. But, but in step one, we only achieved that the d phi infinity is large. So it's not necessarily that this norm will become large. Therefore, we're going to do a make a perturbation, high frequency per, uh, perturbation. Now, if you wish, this is a, this kind of perturbation where you perturb by adding a high oscillatory. Uh, actually, this idea dates back, if you wish, uh, dates back 50 years ago to Nash. I mean, that uh, when you have this C1 embedding paper, this, the, 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 when you try to move, construct a short embedding. Yes, 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 yes. But this is, has a deep root. Yes, <laughs> has a, it's a fancy name. Yes. Yes, it actually dates back all the way to, uh, goes all the way to Nash, where he actually has need to have a rank two, I mean, have two in the main directions. But here is actually, of course, the situation is simpler. So, but, uh, well, not necessarily, but this is uh, the perturbation which you have to do, make a high frequency perturbation. Once you do that, you can just uh, capture, meaning that you pick up where the Lagrangian uh, norm become large, because your norm is gonna be localized to that region. And then, of course, once you start perturbing your uh, perturbation argument as analysis, you start to worry. Because if you perturb your initial data, your flow map is also perturbed. You run into tautology, right? So there is a, uh, here you have to fix it uh, by a perturbation argument in the, in the higher space, W14, to fix the change in the flow map. So this thing, I mean, as I always say, that the analysis is, uh, depending on who you are, is the, the angel or the devil is in the details. So you don't know <laughs> anything <laughs> unless you write the detail down and check it carefully. So basically, but this thing works. So basically, as a result, in the main order, this thing, uh, you were inflated through this large uh, Lagrangian deformation map, which we constructed earlier. So then the step three, step three, there are, uh, is, there's a, depending on the situation, this is a, where there's a soft part and there's a slightly more involved part. So it's basically, we want to repeat, you know, to achieve infinity, we want to repeat the local construction in infinitely many small patches which stay away from each other locally, but then you want to glue these solutions so that it becomes the infinity, infinity. So this is, a, and there, there are two cases to take care of. This is the only s picture with I, which I want to throw in. This is one of my, actually my wife's favorite, so far, far away. So, the, so it's the following. So this non, uh, uh, let's say uh, it's non-compact data. Basically what you do is very so soft. You add each patches sequentially and choose, you choose their mutual distance ever larger. So if, it, if, I, if you allow me to make a very weak analogy, so this is an analog of weakly interacting particles in statistical mechanics, I mean, it's weakly interacting. So, I mean, before even making any perturbation argument, you have to know what you have. Uh, basically, the key properties exploited here, there are two things. One is the finite transport speed of the uh, Euler flow, so that you actually, when you, the things do not move, move very fast, and then there's a spatial decay of the risk, uh, risk kernel, which takes care of the perturbations of between, the, uh, between the patches. So this is uh, basically the case where you have smooth data. Now, the more hard part is to work hard, uh, to hard, hard is the case 3B, which is where I mentioned before the serum 2, the second technical slide, is a compact data. Now, once you want to move th put these things in a compact domain, these patches, inevitably, you have to get close to each other once you start the evolution, even though you initially they are separated. Now, this, this case, you have to take care of the fine, fine interaction between the patches. 
So again, it's like a strongly in a writing case, which you have to work harder and, and look, look, zoom in, basically. So this is, as I promised, this, there's a lot of, uh, there, there are some analysis here. So basically what happens is the following. Each patch will have uh, its own time scale. That's why, I mean, I call it in the uh, d different scale analysis. So this patch have different, uh, when you, when, w let's say you have already do the construction for M, previous N minus one patches, and then you want to throw in a new patch. Now the new patch will have its own life, uh, lifetime, T between uh, zero and Tn, and then it obeys the dynamics of the following form, which is the omega n, and then plus this part, and then plus this uh, Euler part. So if you wish, without this term, this is just Euler. This term is just uh, the interaction of its current patch and the previous patches. Now you have to do a inflation, and then make sure you don't have run into a tautology. So basically, what you have to do uh, a simple thing. Uh, I mean, I would call it. I wouldn't call it Galilean puts. It's just change a variable. So basically, you change a variable and then define new standard, and try to control the remainder by some analysis, and then you, and then redo a new inflation argument. This is basically how it how, how it goes. So basically, the, the the picture in mind is the following. So that we choose the data. Each uh, each each patch will have its own time and then the omega m will become more and more localized. The actually whole constructed solution is actually time global because the, uh, you have L infinity control. So during the, the, the when, how do you achieve uh, norm inflation is that during the interaction time, this smooth is in the limited patch time, this o o patch omega n actually produced this, this patch which you add uh, produced a not desired norm inflation, which stays uh, well disjoint. Of course, there are something to do here because there's a lot, I mean, tr uh, believe me, there are a lot of perturbation details which you have to do, which is to, so that you don't run into tautology and all that. I mean, the things, perturbation argument is very, uh, you need some work. I mean, it's not hard, but well, you have to do it carefully. So now, uh, let me just, uh, I only have two slides to go. So the difficulties, let me comment on the uh, difficulty in 3D, so, which is a snapshot. So the first three d uh, difficulty in 3D, uh, is the lack of LP conservation of vorticity, which you don't have in, the, in L2. It, this is almost a luxury. In L2, you have it, but then L, uh, in, in 3D, you don't have. And this is deeply, uh, not surprisingly, this is deeply connected with the vorticity stretching term, <coughs> omega dot gradient u. Now, in order to simplify this analysis, let's say consider the one of the I mean, uh, well-known ones, which is called the axisymmetric flow without swirl. So here, this is a, basically you are in a cylindrical domain. So, I mean, not I mean, in cylindrical coordinates. R, is the distance between the zero and then the x1, x2 on this. And then you write down the equation like that. So omega over r. r is not the, to the origin, it's to the cylindrical axis. So you have a simple equation. Now, once you see this equation, you start to have some illusion because you see, okay, this is maybe just a simple repetition of the 2D. Why bother? Now, there actually, it's not because there are, I mean, not some non-trivial things which are, uh, will, will happen. Because of owing to this innocent denominator r, it look, looks like innocent. The sol solution operator for you, uh, for you and then acquires additional metric factor compared to 2D. This is actually, you don't hide the problem. The problem is still there. This is actually manifestation of the vorticity stretching effect, this term, in the axisymmetric setting. It's still there. Now, the difficulty, of course, is that to control the metric factor still produce large de uh, Lagrangian deformation. Here, you have to work a little bit. This is the difficulty in 3D, one of the first difficulty, but you can do it, basically. Now, the other things more, which uh, let me say that, is that the best local theory, there's a dilemma that which you have to play a little bit. The best local theory requires, uh, due to Dan Shun, basically, the omega over r belong to the Lorentz space L31, which you need. This is, I mean, let me just not bother. But the dilemma that we have in order to run this kind of inflation argument, we actually need omega over r L31 norm to be infinity, basically, almost infinite to produce normal inflation. So once you look at that, okay, maybe you have to do something. So to fix this, there's a new perturbation argument which you throw in the, in the 3D. When you add these patches, you control the L infinity norm over the whole lifespan such that this effect becomes negligible. It's essentially, basically, you quantify things and try to do it better than the current, local, uh, current theory. So as a spin-off, as a byproduct, you actually get a, we, we actually produce basically the first example of this local solution with the infinite omega over R 3, 1 norm which is also, also not known before. But there are more technical issues which I don't want to bother you in this late hour, so but let me just, uh, so in summary, let me just, uh, I think it's the last slide. So the, 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 what's in, uh, in this paper is a new strategy which is, uh, 
I don't know if it's a good name, but just a large Lagrangian deformation. Into, it's a strat very robust strategy, can be used in other equations, of course. And what's nice about it is that we exploited both Lagrangian and uh, Eulerian point of view, which was not available in other cases. And in fact, there is a, if you wish, it's a mul very multi-scale construction. You have to, the solution bubbles live in absolutely different frequency scales. And uh, in stark contrast, in sharp contrast, if you, it's a not fair comparison. Some people will object, but let me just throw it anyway. So if you consider H1 critical nonlinear Schrodinger equation, which where, uh, of course, Professor Bukhan made a breakthrough here. So this I, t uh, I partial T plus Laplace in U equals to uh, U4 to U. This is actually locally well posed for U belong to H dot 1, H dot 1. But on the other hand, in our setting, we don't, we don't, it's going to be your post, I mean, in the H2, in the 2D. So, but of course, uh, you will argue this is not a fair comparison because you have a Laplace in here, which sets a scale. So anyhow, but the, I, I think this is fine. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you.